Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, on this blessed Sunday, make us worthy to praise your resurrection with pure hearts and clear consciences. With all the children of your Holy Church, we glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory on honor and praise to the good and merciful Lord, who in his compassion came down to us and became flesh. He chose to taste death to save us, and he descended to the realm of the dead. By his resurrection he gave joy to his disciples and gave light to the nations with the light of his salvation. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O word of God, who cannot adequately praise you for the depth of your compassion, and what voice can bless you, for you are above all praise. Neither mind nor tongue can describe the wonders you accomplished on Sunday, the day of your resurrection from the dead. And so with the psalmist David we cry out, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Now, O Christ, our God, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense which we offer you to forgive our sins, give peace of mind to those in distress, and comfort to those who are anxious. Bring back those who are far and watch over those who are near. Guide the shepherd, sanctify the priest, and purify the deacons. Pardon all sinners and guard the righteous. Protect orphans and help widows. Drive away all conflicts and put an end to dissension. Remember the faithful departed and grant them rest in your heavenly kingdom, that with them we may celebrate that eternal feast. We raise glory to you, to your blessed Father, and to your living Holy Spirit forever.
Lord, accept the sweet fragrance of our incense and make us worthy to announce your resurrection with the angels, to proclaim it with your women disciples, and to rejoice in it with your pure apostles. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. with joy from the mountains. Sunday is a feast so great. Offer praise to the Lord God and with angels celebrate. letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. <clears throat> May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, because of this, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus for your Gentiles, if, as I suppose, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I have written briefly earlier, when you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to human beings in other generations, as it now has been revealed to his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise of Jesus Christ through the gospel. Of this, I became a minister by the gift of God's grace that was granted me in accord with the exercise of his power. To me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ, add to bring light for all what is the plan, plan of mystery hidden from past ages in God who created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be known through the church 
to the principalities and authorities in heaven. This was according to the eternal purpose that accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have a boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over my afflictions for you. This is your glory. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. During this instance, Kyrie Adesim. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. <clears throat> From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word the Apostle Matthew writes, Jesus went from that place and he withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out to him, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and they asked him, Send her away, Lord, for she keeps calling out after us. And he said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of house of Israel. But the woman came forward and she did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. And he said in reply, It is not right to take the bread of the children and to throw it to dogs. But she said, Please, Lord, for even the little dogs eat the scraps that fall from the tables of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you have desired. And her daughter was healed instantly from that hour. This is the truth, peace be with you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is severely possessed by a demon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's difficult for us to put ourselves in the footsteps or in the place of this woman, to think about her discouragement and her maybe even at times frustration 
First, she's dealing with a daughter that's profoundly ill and is being, as you said, possessed by a demon. She's heard of this miracle working rabbi from Galilee who happens to be in the area now. And when she goes with a profession of faith, son of David, he ignores her. When we place it in the context, it's always important. And again, chapter 15 of St. Matthew here, I encourage you to read. So our gospel today begins and he left that place. Well, the place was Galilee. So he's in Galilee in the south. He goes up to Tyre of Sidon. This is the episode of today's gospel, which is today southern Lebanon, and then back down to Galilee. What takes place just before this is this discussion that our Lord has with the Pharisees on their interpretation of the law of Moses. So the law of Moses has some very straightforward things to do, not to do, a lot of things doing with dietary laws and that. And what the Pharisees and the scribes did in order that this be fulfilled of the law of Moses, they put other regulations slightly outside. So if you're doing these things, then you're definitely doing that. That's the idea. And what our Lord is arguing with them over is, is they're placing an importance on these outer extremities of observances, which he doesn't say are bad. He just says you're making them as important as what the law of Moses requires. And that's unacceptable. So he has this whole discussion and he finishes by saying, look, in the end, it's not about how you wash your hands from finger to elbow. It's not about how you wash the pots and pans that you own that make you pure or impure. He says it's what comes from within the person. He talks about the heart of man, what comes from the individual that comes out. And he says jealousies, hatred, envy. He says those are the things that make a person impure. And then we're told he leaves that place and he comes down and is confronted with this woman. Now what's important to understand, and of course there's a kind of a link with this gospel with us I've mentioned before, is that of course most of the immigrants or many of the families of the immigrants at the beginning of the 20th century, they come from southern Lebanon, from Cassin. So it's the southern part area around Sidon and Tyre. And there's, one, there's two things to note here. There's one is a personal lesson for us, and then there's also the public historical fact. And the public historical fact is what this poor woman slams up against this day. And that is that the Messiah is sent to Israel. And it's why, we're not, we've mentioned this before, that the purpose of the, of the preparation of Israel for 1,500 years was to prepare a people into which the Messiah was meant to be received. And then from that proclamation of healing, that gospel, Israel through, with the Messiah were meant to be heralds to the rest of the world, to the nations, to the Gentiles. It's only after the resurrection, the glorification of our Lord and Pentecost, that the gospel is given to the Gentiles now, we know the rest of the story. We know how well Israel did or did not receive the Messiah in the crucifixion of our Lord. But it's why he says to the apostles, because when they come here, this woman first is in this crowd. It's a crowd of people. And she comes up to him and she says, Lord, or we could say, sir. But she uses a messianic title. Lord, son of David, please help me. My daughter is possessed by a demon. She's very sick. And we're told our Lord just walks right past her. And obviously she must have kept following after them in the crowd, shouting out this, because eventually the apostles come up and they say, Lord, can you just get rid of this woman? She just keeps shouting after us. This is embarrassing and it's annoying. <clears throat> and that's when he says to them, and she's probably within earshot, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, which tells us part of the purpose. There are obviously Jewish people, Israelites, living in southern Lebanon. And so when our Lord is saying that, he's, off, he's announcing that, <clears throat> he's announcing and he's confirming that public historical mission of the Messiah to Israel and then through Israel to the rest of the world. And so he just reiterates to this apostles, this is a pagan woman, this Canaanite. 
She's not of Israel. She doesn't follow the law of Moses. And he ignores her when he, they walk by. And he confirms to the apostles because certainly to some degree the apostles feel sorry for her. This woman is obviously in a bad situation. So you just deal with her and then send her away. So she stops shouting after us. And in the midst of that, we're told the woman herself pushes forward in the crowd and she pays homage. Now homage in the East, she goes down on all fours, like we do on Good Friday, the Metani, hands and knees forward to the ground to pay homage to the persons and she says, Lord, please help me. And then things go from bad to worse because now he's actually talking to her and he says to this poor woman, it's not right for me to take the bread, the food for children, and to throw it to dogs. She, she's kneeling in front of him. He doesn't call her personally a dog, but obviously we understand the context. <clears throat> so she goes from having a very sick daughter, trying to pay homage to this rabbi from Galilee, is ignored, and now she's basically being called a dog. This is very harsh. This is one of the harshest lessons we have in the gospel. But she answers, she's quick-witted, she's smart, and she answers beautifully by saying, yes, Lord. And in the Greek, the term, and we haven't just translated as dogs, I think, in your bulletin. But in the Greek, it means little dogs, puppies. And everybody knows puppies, and you know when you say puppy eyes, everyone knows what that means. And she says to our Lord, kneeling in front of him, yes, Lord, but even the puppies receive the crumbs that fall off the tables of their masters. And then he's like, this woman is brilliant. Your faith is tremendous, woman. So may it be done to you as you have desired. And we're told her daughter's healed immediately. So what is the lesson for us that we draw from this? We look at this story. He praises her in the end, and the people who are waiting and watching this finally like, whew, okay, now we have something positive and there's a healing that takes place. But the whole rest of the lesson is very hard. So what is, why is this recorded by St. Matthew? What are we being taught? First of all, it's the proper ordering of our lives, mind, will, sentiments, feelings, the emotions. They are very important. They're part of everything we do in our lives. Sometimes we're just in a bad mood. Sometimes we're just in a good mood. Sometimes it's a glorious morning like today, and that helps. So feelings are always there, but we can never govern our lives by feelings. The person who on one day decides that their boss is a jerk, so they quit. All right, now you gotta find another job. And we all have known people like that who bounce from place to place throughout their lives. Because they govern everything by feelings. Today, the, the, the boss is just a jerk. I have the right to quit and I need to get out of here. That's not what this woman is doing. The sentiments and the emotions, the will of the things that we choose, and the mind that sees. But we're being taught first, if this woman were in a modern day parish in which so much is just about feeling and emotion, which is always important, but when it's placed first, it's catastrophe. This woman being ignored by the rabbi would have just foof, had her feelings hurt, walked out of that crowd, gone home that night, and had been on the phone for the next five days to tell everyone she knows what a jerk this rabbi is. Nothing you hear about him is true. He's not a miracle worker. I went to go see him. He just ignored me in the crowd. And then she would have gotten on Facebook for the next six months because her feelings were hurt. Now we all recognize that. So the lesson for us is what is this? This woman has a conviction by her mind. This is the son of David. And she recognizes that. And the feelings are there. And she certainly has hurt feelings that day. She certainly feels cast off. There's no doubt about it. 
but the mind and the will she continues to follow after because she knows this rabbi is a source of goodness. And so she perseveres no matter what personally she's feeling because her mind is governing the will which is choosing to follow this man because he is the source of goodness. So that's the first lesson we have is that in our lives as we follow the path of the gospel, it is often not very easy. And I would say that even the more serious you become upon in the gospel, the more difficult it becomes because our Lord will clearly conform you to his life of crucifixion and death. So that's really the first lesson and the principal lesson that we have from this is this perseverance because of our conviction of the infinite goodness of the hidden one. But it has to be a conviction of mind. The sentiment that we've talked about the last couple of weeks now has always been a disaster. And as you know, using that example of what that woman would do in the modern world, is we all recognize, that's why we laugh, but it's not what she does. And she's a lesson to us of the idea that the first is the mind. We know that the infinite hidden God of goodness is the source of all goodness and healing. And with that conviction, we persevere, even when he apparently ignores us. We pray, sometimes we pray for years and nothing seems to change. He seems to just walk right past us. And worse, it seems that the saints, the apostles around our Lord are saying, well, you just get rid of this person, they're annoying. But remember in another episode in the gospel, our Lord says, he says, you knock and you pound on this door and you ask heaven for what you need, for what you desire, for what will make you better. And he gives the whole parable of the man whose friend comes in the middle of the night and he doesn't want to get up to give him what he's asking for because it's the middle of the night. And he says, but he pounds away. And our Lord is teaching us about the perseverance that we have to do in this. And so this woman, who's not even a member of Israel, gives us a lesson of the beautiful ordering of mind, will, and emotions. I talk about it in the bulletin this week on the virtue of meekness, the quality of meekness in the gospel. It's a strength, that ordering of mind and will and the emotions and our sentiments. But she also gives us that letter, le, uh, lesson of perseverance. And notice that what takes place in her is she grows in this knowledge by how she interacts with our Lord. But in the end, the healing, she grows, but the healing that she's been asking for is for someone else, her daughter, close, obviously attached to her. So while our Lord does heal and accomplish what this woman asks for, he also heals and matures the woman herself in the steps and the pathway that he brings her. And that's why when they return in the context to Galilee and our Lord returns, that next part of the chapter 15, when he goes to Galilee, we're just told that the crowds come to our Lord, the blind and the mutilated and the handicapped, and they're brought to our Lord, all of these sick and the possessed, and he heals the crowds. But that's not the purpose in the end of the story, is we're told that the crowds see this healing taking place around our Lord and they praise God for what he's accomplishing. And that's our final lesson in the end is that our Lord does do healings, but all of those people died. The daughter of this woman, she died at some point, though she was freed at that moment. But what is important and what is enduring is the praise of God which continues on. That's what brings us forward. And so when we understand that, then we can look forward to that day of being brought closer and closer to our Lord. That even if you don't want to give me things because I'm asking for them politely at first and now just screaming in a crowd, if you won't do that, then please just look upon me as a puppy under the table waiting for crumbs to fall, at least that, please. And with that, I can start on the path of the gospel in a great amount of depth and a great amount of security to go forward towards the hidden God of all goodness for both healing and strength and maturity in the path of the gospel. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Honor their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Titus. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, o holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. and security in your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives that we may raise glory and thanks to you 
now and forever. Amen. O oh Lord, we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you my brothers and sisters forever and with your spirit let us lift up our thoughts our minds and our hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify and proclaim. full of mercy. Holy is your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit. You are holy and the giver of all that is good. For our salvation, your only begotten Son, became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us. Rabbiama haudaktum hashodin lema bedhaye, and sabe lachmo beda kodi shantum, who bara hu kodesh, watsu ya beletalimita o kado mara, sabachula mehene kulhu, ho no denita. Fahuru dil, dahlo faiku, wahlo sagiye, meta kaseo meti hel, kusoyon, haume wa haye dan alam alami. Kanno alkoso dam sich women hamro men mayo Barhu kadesh Gabel talmita kado mara Sabishtaw mehne kulhu Hono denita Demo dilan dia tiki khadato Dahlo faiku wahlof sagiye Mete shadu meti hel Khul soyan khawne wa khayen an alam alameen Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your
your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O oh Lord, lover of all people, we remember your plan of salvation, and we ask you to have mercy on your worshipers, and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, O oh Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O oh God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Manin Murio, Manin Murio, Manin Murio, Nite Mother of Ohio Kadisho, Unachen Line Ur Corbono. By his descent he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shout of Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, with blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your holy church that you established on a solid rock of the true faith. Send her vocations to the holy priesthood and religious life in a world of distractions which pull us away from properly loving you and our neighbor. May those who you have called to serve your holy church respond to you and have the courage to follow your will. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have Remember, O Lord, all who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Titus. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. 
we pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the holy fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for them. Grant rest, O God, to the departed and forgive the sins we have committed with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. <clears throat> Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit.
Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy, holy Father, Father, one Holy Son, one, one Holy Spirit, Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be the glory.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and the glory of your holy name and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation, and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So there are just two announcements. One is that this week the Maronite Voice arrived, the latest edition. It's excellent. So I highly encourage you to each take a copy on the way out. And the second point, of course, is from the Gospel. If the lady had gone off indignant because things weren't working out the way she wished and our Lord ignored her when she first asked, her daughter would never have been healed and she would never have grown in the faith. 
it's obvious in the sermon, I think, but it's a point that I didn't make in full value explicitly. So may God love you and grant you perseverance on the pathway, regardless of whether it seems our Lord's ignoring us, because in the end, his desire is to bring us healing and maturity in the gospel. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.